Today I'm going to make precise the notion of divisibility. Now, you've thought about divisibility, you've been thinking about it for much of your life, and we've been talking about it, and that's fine, but at some point in mathematics, you have to write things down formally because you want to start proving things that are a bit more complicated. And in order to do that, you've got to have a formal way of saying it, otherwise it all becomes a bit woolly. Now, you might have noticed in my proof of uh, divisibility by 9, where I said that you could just add up the digits, there was one part that was a little bit woolly, because I said something like um, m is divisible by 9, and n is divisible by 9, implies which I might write using this imply symbol, implies m plus n is divisible by 9. The question is, is that obvious or does it require a proof? If you have to convince somebody else of that who didn't believe it, you always have to imagine that there's somebody very sceptical over there, possibly one who isn't as clever as you, and you have to convince them that this is true. How can you convince them this is true? Well, first of all, we better say what divisible by really means. So in this case, what does m is divisible by at 9 mean? m is divisible by 9 means, well, it means that if you divide m by 9, you still get a whole number. So it means that m divided by 9 is some k in the integers. Now, is that a satisfactory way of defining is divisible by? The trouble is that what if your sceptical person over there doesn't know how to divide? Then what are you going to say? Well, it turns out that you can just move this thing up here and say that there exists Remember, this is the there exists symbol. There exists some integer k such that m equals 9k. So I hope you can see that this statement is the same as that statement. And it turns out that it's more convenient to use this second way of defining divisibility. And also, instead of saying m is divisible by 9, we make 9 the more active partner in this little crime. And so instead we say 9 divides m, because 9 is kind of dividing m up into bits. You might think that you're the one doing the dividing, but oh no, it turns out that it's 9 who's doing the dividing. So we say 9 divides m, if this is true. So we can now turn this into a general definition of when any old thing divides any old other thing. So here's the definition. Given m and d in the natural numbers including 0, so remember this is the set of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, we say that D divides M precisely when, well, let's get rid of the irrelevant part of this. We just write this down, where 9 is now being replaced by our general term D. So if um, there exists k in the integers such that m equals d times k. Okay? Now I suppose that this, because I'm only doing numbers bigger than 0, this doesn't need, really need to be the integers, this can just be the natural numbers as well. So another way of saying this is m equals dk or some k. It's important that it's a natural number, otherwise we'll get some silly fractions going around. So 
I hope you can see that this is exactly what we did before, where 9, we could be testing for divisibility by some other du, du, du. So we often write this as d divides m, right? So we can have some examples. Let's put some examples in the little box over here, just so that we know we've got our definition straight. So 2 divides 6, right? 2 divides 8. 3 divides 9, 3 divides 12. We can also say something doesn't divide something else. So 2 does not divide 5. And we put a little line through our divide thing to show that that's not true. And 3 also doesn't divide 5. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can use this formal definition to prove that thing I wrote up earlier, that if m is divisible by 9 and n is divisible by 9, then the sum has to be, be divisible by 9 as well. Um, so let me just leave this part of this definition up so that we can remind ourselves what it says. So let's have a little, ah, I've dropped my little clock on the floor, oops. Okay, so let's have a little lemma. We're going to prove that if d divides m and d divides n, then d divides m plus n. Okay? So let's prove this. Remember, for a proof, we have to write down a series of statements, each of which follows from the one before, or is one of the things we've been allowed to assume in this proof. So here we're allowed to assume that d divides m and d divides n. Okay, so d divides m means, well, it means this, right? It means that m equals dk for some k in the natural numbers. And d divides n means n equals d well, something else. So let's call this one k1, and let's call this one k2 for some k2 in the natural numbers. So what about m plus n? Then m plus n equals dk1 plus dk2, right? But now we can just factorize this and we get d multiplied by k1 plus k2. So that's d multiplied by some natural number, right? So k1 plus k2 is itself a natural number. So we have got m plus n into the form d multiplied by some k. So if we call that k, then we've got m plus n equals dk with k in the natural numbers. So we're done because that's the definition. Can I squeeze it in? So d does indeed divide m plus n. And I can write a little box around it to denote few, I've got to the end. So I hope you can see Perhaps I'll go over here again. Hope you can see that this proof would also work if we were doing m minus n instead. And perhaps you can see if you can do it for a times m, where a is some other natural number.